Well, it was an active day yesterday for Toronto and for the Rays. A disappointing finish to the short three game homestand. We'll take a look at the starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. The Rays have Brandon Geyer leading off. He is the DH. Taylor Bonner will be making his big league debut at short. Evan Longoria, then Steve Pierce, followed by Steven Souza Jr. Desmond Jennings hit sixth in front of Kurt Casale. It will be Kevin Kiermeyer in the eighth spot again, and Tim Beckham at second base hitting ninth. Well, and Mr. Quality taking them out here tonight for the Toronto Blue Jays. Jay Happ, seven starts, seven quality starts. The numbers outstanding. A 5-0 record, 2.05 earned run average in 48 and a third innings. I mean, he's almost averaging seven innings a start. So he's off to a, a tremendous start. The one thing the Rays have going for him, the two no decisions, both against the Rays, both games that the Rays won eventually. Well, here's Geyer all set to go to work against Jay Happ. And the first pitch of this game is a fastball, and it's a called strike. So we're underway. Rays facing the lefty. Tapper foul, nothing at two. A 338 average for Geyer now with four home runs, 11 runs batted in. Fouls this one out of play. Brandon Geyer's Geyer. quality of play forcing his way into this lineup. That's exactly right. Lefties, righties, it does not matter because of the, the, what he brings to this team, the, the ability to get on base. It's a foul ball. You know, and, it, and it's, listen, he's a guy that he crowds the plate. We've shown that overhead shot of his stride. He strides right up to the line. He does not give ground. That's why he gets hit by so many pitches, and he has been extremely productive that like the numbers speak for themselves actually better against righties than he is against lefties and they're both great numbers it's away and it's one and two yeah, he's another one of those hitters too not a real big uppercut swing you know he keeps his bat in the strike zone for a long time increasing his chance for solid contact well the Rays for years have been looking for a solid leadoff man and if he can continue to do what he's doing, getting on base at this rate, he might be the answer. Then where do you put Logan? Put him right down in the, in the middle of the lineup. Well, 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 let's get Logan healthy and yeah. deal with that. But I'm telling you, Dyer is out on strikes. Well, let's go ahead and set the Toronto Blue Jay defense for you. Brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source in the outfield left to right. We have Michael Saunders, Kevin Pilar, and Jose Bautista. And across that infield third to first, Josh Donaldson, Troy Tulowitzki, Darwin Barney, and Justin Smoke with Russell Martin behind the plate. Well, here's Taylor Motter making his major league debut. He can play all over the place. And he apparently is going to fit right in. He swings at the first pitch. <laughs> oh, on the count. Boy, the Rays have done a lot of that this year. An aggressive bunch, top to bottom. You know, especially when you're facing a pitcher that you know is going to fill the strike zone up. Yep. And that's something that Jay Happ has done a great job of this year. That's why he's been as successful as he has. But if you're going to throw a lot of first pitch strikes, if they're out over the plate, they're going to get swung at. And that's been a big part of his success when you look at the turnaround for him last year when he went to Pittsburgh, the command of his pitches and getting ahead of hitters. Yes. A big, big part of his success story. Change of an arm angle with pitching coach Ray Searage brought it down just a little bit. That's allowed him to fill up that strike zone. And the other thing that he does very well is he's got the curveball, the slider, the change, and he mixes those three pitches very well. So you don't get caught up into one being a, a go to and you know maybe the curveball to an extent especially to righties but boy he mixes his off speed pitch as well and when you're pitching from ahead that's difficult for a hitter ground ball right side who's going to cover first that's a base hit Taylor Motter an infield hit in his first big league at bat 
hustling down the line and that's part of his game as well. Well and, and you can it was a nice play defensively for the Blue Jays except for Jay Happ. He was very late getting over there. Watch his break. Ball to the right side. You've already got to be on your way. It's already too late. Taylor Motter not a speed demon but he can run and with Jay Happ getting off the mound this late you have no shot. So Motter gets that first hit out of the way right here the first time up. One on with one out. Here's Evan Longoria. Evan after the first pitch as well fouls it back. You know when you look at the approach Happ has taken throwing strike after strike. The number of pitches per inning compared to his career numbers has gone way down. It was over 17 and he's barely over 14 this year so far. I mean that's almost unsustainable 14 pitches an inning. He's ahead of Longoria 0 2. But you're right completely efficient. That's what you know you, you could tie it all together. We go back seven starts almost 49 innings 48 and a third. That's almost seven innings a start. Well you can do that if you're throwing 14 pitches per. And Evan is out on strikes. He went up to the top of the zone and got him swinging through it. More and more teams are doing that with Evan Longoria with the fastball get ahead of him and then try to power it by him up and away. And that one got up over his his swing. You'll see it right here. Ninety two. Now Steve Pierce. Pierce the guy in the lineup who has had success against half in the past and hits a high shot deep to left that baby will get out of here home run for Steve Pierce a two run shot in the Rays take an early lead that's his fourth career home run off Jay Happ. Number six on the year. Everybody swinging early, and Steve Pierce got a mistake. Jay Happ just going with a, a first pitch fastball right out over the plate, and he knew it. Jay Happ never, never turned around to look at this one. So two runs home on the long one off the bat of Steve Pierce, and here's Steven Souza Jr. taking a pitch. How about that? Souza swings at more first pitches than any other hitter in the lineup. And I think he might be the only guy who's taken that first pitch here in the first inning. Looking for a ball. Down to first. Smoke has it. Makes the play unassisted. Rays come up with two. Base hit by Motter and a home run by Pierce. Two nothing Tampa Bay. Rays carry a two run lead into the bottom of the first. 
for Drew Smiley. Here's the lineup for Toronto presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Kevin Pilar, and then Josh Donaldson, Jose Bautista. The DH is Edwin Encarnacion. Smoke to the whiskey, Saunders, followed by Martin. And then Darwin Barney, the second baseman, hits ninth. Well, and Drew Smiley trying to even the score here against the Toronto Blue Jays, or at least get a little something back. He's had two starts against them this year, and they've hit five home runs off him of the seven he's given up on the season, both losses. First pitch to Kevin Pilar is a ball. There's a strike and it's one and one. Yeah, we talked about it in the pregame show and the unfortunate thing about those two starts for Drew is they really were just a handful of pitches. That was the difference. Outside of those home runs and you can't obviously do away with them. They really didn't do much off of Drew. Falls behind Pilar, three and one. There's a strike. So a full count. Well, when both these lefties are on their games, it's going to be a low pitch count. Not many pitches per inning. Three two to Pilar. It's fouled out of play. You know, the Rays have been aggressive swinging at that first pitch, and so have the Blue Jays. Popper right side, Pierce. That ball just foul. Takes care of the leadoff man, Pilar. Reminder, Rays fans, you can watch the games on TV and you can now stream games live on your mobile device as well. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app. Log in and stream the Rays wherever you go. Here's Josh Donaldson. Get in there for a strike breaking ball to start Donaldson. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> this is a fastball hunter. Very, very aggressive. And I'll tell you, he's hit left handers extremely well this year, and almost half of his home runs have come against the Rays. Yeah, and his lifetime numbers against Smiley, 7 of 14 with three home runs. And you see right there on the box tracks, the first pitch curveball down below the zone, the next two pitches away. Donaldson loves that ball, middle of the plate, middle in. That's his hot zone. And that picks up the zone on that outside edge. Two and two. Mike Winters is calling the balls and strikes veteran umpire. That broke in in uh, 1988. And he is a guy who will give that corner and maybe a little bit off with a right handed hitter up there. Not big about giving strikes, at least call strikes up. Fly ball short left. Motter out there from shortstop, and he's got it. So two gone. That's going to bring up Jose Bautista involved in the major brawl between. The Jays and the Rangers in Arlington, and here it is. Matt Bush hitting Bautista with a pitch, and then Bautista going in hard later in the game at second base. Ned O'Dor took exception to that and landed a pretty good quick right cross. Impressive right cross. Impressive that Jose Bautista stayed on his feet, too. You know, they say that. Uh, he had that mouth guard in. You saw his glasses go fly. Yeah. And a couple other things. But he had the mouth guard in. And they say that protected him from greater damage. I mean, you don't have that mouth guard in. You take a punch to the jaw like that. That could be problems. You, think about it. I mean, he caught him flush, too. You're right. That was a short right. 
that was right on the chin, the jaw. One and one to count to Bautista here in the bottom of the first. This one is down. We'll get a chance to take a little closer look at that brawl that they had in Arlington. At a little later in the telecast, we'll talk about that. It'll be fun. That's as good as they get. That's as good as they get. And I know, I know one thing. I know my mom is really, really excited because she loves, loves baseball fights. Yep. We'd like to. Yeah, well, here's the three-one pitch for ball four. So Batista walk. Runner at first with two gone. Got to look at the defense first. Well, let's set that for you. Brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source. In the outfield left to right, we have Jennings, Kiermeyer, and Souza Jr. And then across that infield, third to first, Longoria, Motter, Beckham, and Pierce with Kurt Casale behind the plate. This Taylor Motter, 26 years old, out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Edwin Encarnacion takes a pitch wide. We're going to say we'd like to do some kind of a remote hookup with your mother to get her comments. Put her up in the corner and let her comment on what was going on in that brawl. She loved all of it. She loved probably him getting hit for the bat flip. She loved the hard slide, the short right. Yep. See, the thing was Bautista got long. He tried to get long. And yes, he did. Yeah, you know, he shortened up, and yeah, she would. She would probably love to talk about that. Break that down. We could take a break. I was going to say I'm surprised I haven't heard from her, but when we come to Toronto, my phone gets turned off. Now ball three to Encarnacion after the walk to Batista. Smiley way behind in the count. Uncharacteristic. Drew Smiley really does a great job. Lowest rate walk rate in his career this year. And he misses for ball four. He retires the first two, walks Bautista, and then Encarnacion. You know, you wonder how much uh, of the way that he's pitching right now is, is mental. You know, in, in the sense that this, he realizes that in those two starts against the Blue Jays, when they were able to beat him, it was a couple of mistakes out over the plate and the long ball. And so yep. with the big power up there and falling behind, it's like he's picking against them, not attacking the zone, picking around the edges and, and missing the zone. Yeah, that might be the conversation yeah. Cash and the Hickey yep. were having right there. You don't want to be too careful. Justin Smoke getting a chance to play pretty much every day, and he's responded very well. There's a curveball, and he lays off that. It's too low. 1-0. Oh. Well, the Blue Jays hit three home runs the first time out against Smiley. That was on April the 4th. And when he faced him on the 29th of April, they hit two more. And he's behind Smoke. Two balls, no strikes. This summer, some of the biggest names in soccer converge on the United States for the 100th anniversary of one of the world's biggest tournaments. Coverage of the Copa America Centenario begins June 3rd across the networks of Fox Sports. First inning visit by Jim Hickey. They break that up. Raised with two runs already home and with two outs, a couple of walks. And the conference on the hill. Well, and you hope the trend continues because usually Jim Hickey goes out there and gets a pick pitcher right back on uh, the right track. He will allow you a little bit of leeway to try to fix the problem yourself. If you don't do it, he's going to head out. And that's what just happened. A turn and Beckham. Not on the bag. Bautista back there. A little miscommunication right there. I think that, well, actually, I don't know if that was a timing play, but Drew Smiley spun. Tim Beckham had not moved out of his position. There's a strike. Two and one. He 
into the dirt. Three balls and a strike. No, we, we do not see this from Drew Smiley. He came into this start with just eight walks on the season. In fact, his walk rate is in the top ten of the American League and already with two walks, falling behind here and just kind of picking around the zone right now. Yeah, he's among the top five when it comes to base runners, walks and hits per inning. And he misses with a fastball up. Boy, you wonder the last time Smiley walked three consecutive hitters. There's that strikeout to walk ratio. Third there. Blake Kershaw goes out of this world and Bartolo Colon, the two in front of him. Troy Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki had a good series at the plate in Texas for the Blue Jays. First pitch, he takes a fastball for strike one. Base is loaded via three walks. Out of the full windup now for Smiley. A little tapper foul off his foot. The ball rolls to the mound. Two strikes now. Well, getting back into the zone, Troy Tulowiski that you, you just mentioned the last couple of weeks has been swinging the bat a lot better for the Blue Jays, but Drew Smiley, one of those guys, if he gets you to two strikes, he knows how to put you away. I mean, his batting average against with two strikes is down about 138. So he can he gets there and then starts to expand. Tulowitzki, a big swing and a foul ball right back. And that's where all of the options are available for Drew Smiley in an 0-2 count especially. He can run the fastball up high like that. He can try to, he has the luxury now because of the foul ball to go maybe a little higher if he wants. He can go back to the bottom of the zone with the curveball. He can do just about anything he wants here. Goes up again. Wanted to Tulowitzki has had problems this year against left handed pitching. His career, he's over a 300 hitter against lefties around 314 and was down in the low 100s so far this year. You know, when they made that trade for Tulowitzki, you know, he came over, certainly solidified the shortstop defense, but the stick really wasn't there last year. At the beginning of this season, it wasn't where the Blue Jays, or Troy for that matter, thought it would be. Starting to come around here a little bit more recently. But they're, they're the numbers loud and clear. Count is now 2-2. He got it. Struck him out with a fastball. Tulowitzki down on strikes. Jays leave him loaded. Rays lead 2-0.
run by Steve Pierce giving them this early advantage. Desmond Jennings will open the second for the Rays against Jay Happ, Jennings, Casale, and Kiermaier. First pitch. That's a fastball too high. Desmond at 161. But he's hit well against the Blue Jays. 2 0 the count. The career average is over 300. That's for over 60 games. But right now, he's one of his last 36. Boy, when you're in a slump like that, I mean, you're just, just something fall in. You need something, some positive feedback. Ground ball up is. the middle, and there's a base hit in the center. A leadoff base runner for the Rays in the second. Now maybe this is what kind of gets Desmond Jennings back to normal at least. Well, it's, a, uh, it's an amazing game that way. Sometimes it's just inexplicable. There will be hitters I'm sure that you have owned and hitters that gave you problems. In his case, he comes to this ballpark and gets hits. And it doesn't make any difference who has pitched for the Blue Jays through the years. He just gets hits here. Kurt Casale takes a pitch and that's in there for a strike. Well, and you know, here's the thing. He knows that. He knows I hit well in this ballpark. So all of a sudden you come here and you feel better. Mentally you feel better. You can take that one for 36 and say, you know what? It ends now because I hit well in this ballpark. It's just amazing what positive thinking can do. Yeah, and you know, as much as the game, people have always attempted to quantify the game. It's quantified more now than ever to a point that sometimes is staggering. Quantify that. Figure that one out. I mean, how can a guy go one for 36 and come to a park where he hits all the time and gets a base hit his first time up? Somebody will be figuring that out. We'll get back to you in a couple hours. Line drive and a base hit headed toward the corner. Saunders will play the carom. Jennings will stop at third on the double by Kurt Casale and the Rays have another scoring opportunity. Well the Rays have put on the hitting shoes here tonight. Mistakes by Jay Happ out over the plate are getting hit hard. Jennings up the middle a hard ground ball. This pitch out over the plate. Casale he rips it down into the corner and this is one of those situations away from the home run where you've got runners on second and third nobody out situational hitting. This is where the Rays have to get better. And you've got a great opportunity here. Well, Kevin Kiermeyer up here against the lefty. Kiermeyer, one of 11 in his career against him. And it would be a major lift for the Rays now to tack on with a couple runs in the first, a great opportunity in the second. And you have two teams here who for different reasons should be well motivated coming into this game. Shot back into center field. Pilar will go back to make the catch. Runners tag. Jennings will score. And Casale holds at second base. It's three to nothing. So Kiermaier gets the run home. Got the ball airborne. Got it deep enough. That's one in. You know, we talked about Texas and that fracas they had with the Rangers down in Arlington yesterday. Well the Rays lost a game that uh, is tough to shake off. You lose a game the way the Rays lost that game yesterday. That was not pretty. There wasn't any redeeming thing about that game that the Rays could carry forward except to motivate them to go out jump out in front tonight and win a game here and maybe start something. Resilient bunch resilient bunch and I think understanding too after you know watching the brawl that happened yesterday and understanding that this Toronto Blue Jay team is cannot wait to get out and play here tonight you're going to have to match that intensity so if you want to have a chance in this game you're going to have to come out quick come out hot and be ready to go and they certainly have done that Beckham takes a pitch low 
two and on. They're facing Jay Happ, who's off to such a great start. You look at starters in Blue Jay history who've gotten off to this kind of start. Roger Clemens, Dave Steve, if you go back far enough, Steve was five and zero oh back in '84 with a 2.26. Happ's five and zero oh with a 2.05. Clemens in 97 was 6 and 0 with a 2.05. Three balls, no strikes here to Beckham. Well, he's having trouble tonight trying to find his location. Just trying to get it in the area. Throwing strikes, they haven't been quality strikes. The Rays have hit him hard. Now missing the zone. Down here at the bottom of the order for the Rays. Well, it's been quite a turnaround for Jay Happ, 33 years old. With Seattle and Pittsburgh last year. Runs a strike there. Toyota inside look. Put the microscope on Jay Happ since August the 1st of last year, covering 18 starts. He's 12 and 2. 13 of those quality starts. Now, you, you start to get to the sample size of 18. It's, it's not a fluke anymore. He has found a formula that works. High shot back into center field. That's got some carry. Pilar's going to go to the wall. Goodbye. Home run to center for Beckham. A 3 1 pitch. He drives it out to center. A two run shot for Beckham. And suddenly the Rays lead 5 to nothing. Coming into this start, Jay Happ had given up four home runs. They've all been solo shots. And the Rays, tonight already, two two-run blasts, taking advantage of mistakes. And Tim Beckham going out to center field here with the roof closed. That's a blast. The top of the order. Brandon Geyer looks at a strike. Well, Beckham getting the start tonight. He'd gone three for nine in prior at bats against Happ. His first home run off him. There's a ground ball. Donaldson plays it to his left in the throwing time. It's out number two in the second. Now, well, this ball by Brandon Geyer. Hit sharply. Donaldson to his left. Nice glove. Slide up and good throw over to Smoke. Taylor Motter contributed to the Rays with an infield hit. His first time up. His first big league at bat. And an out later scored on the home run by Pierce. I think at some point later in this series, we're going to have to break down the hair off between Motter and Donaldson. I mean that that's a long time that yep. may have been trimmed you know you, you trim it every now and then but that to get that's like 80s hairband hair <laughs> is awesome. Well he brings a certain energy to any team he's on. Sends a fly ball into center Pilar with a lot of room out there makes the catch the Rays are out in the second inning. But they put up three. Sacrifice fly by Kiermeyer and a two run home run by Tim Beckham. Through an inning and a half. It's 5 0 Tampa Bay.
five nothing Rays lead. Drew Smiley walked three men in the first inning. So he faces Michael Saunders, the seventh place hitter, and throws him a strike to lead off the bottom of the second inning. Russell Martin will follow, and then Darwin Barney. He did go. Swept the curve in there. 0 2. Now Drew Smiley now working with a five run lead. Now you really want to pound that strike zone and be in attack mode. You've got some wiggle room. Go back to your game. Saunders with five home runs. Two of those came off Drew Smiley. Who, by the way, just does not give up home runs to left handed hitters. Remember that one was after about that 10 minute delay early in the season, early April, on a replay issue. Two and two. Well, I think that was the one, too. Yeah, he hit it out to center on a 2 1 pitch. The foul ball. Count holds at two and two. Was the first start of the year for Smiley. Saunders hit one out. Donaldson hit one out. Inside and a full count. Well, Saunders faced seven hitters as had yeah. Three ball counts on five of them. Listen, he, he sometimes won't have that many three ball counts in, a, in an entire outing. Popper, shallow center. Kiermeyer's in, making the call. We get Hiram all the way up here. They had Motter, they had that shift on. Motter was out there after it as well, and Kiermeyer came in yelling for that ball. You know, how many times has Kiermeyer been playing center field with Taylor Motter at shortstop? You know, not many of you, the ball goes up, and you want to make sure that the communication, that there will not be an issue. So that's why he was so demonstrative in letting everybody know he knows the shift is on. And all of a sudden, he's going to come in and say, no, no, no. Listen, Hare, you head back in. <laughs> or take this with you. Well, here's Russell Martin, the veteran catcher, looking at a first pitch strike. Last time the Rays saw the Blue Jays, Martin was really slowed by a neck injury. 0 2 and tried to play right through it. He's hitting only 168. And the word is that he's been getting better at bats as that neck seems to be getting better. He's out on three pitches this time. And look where they all are on Fox tracks. Well, you, you don't think that that's part of the game plan? That's called execution, too. Work up in the zone and just overpower Russell Martin. That's exactly what he did. Boy, this is beautiful. Up, up, and away. Two gone. And there's a first pitch strike to Barney. I'm going to tell you something. What we just saw, that little snippet of Russell Martin on the bench is a pitcher's dream. When you get a hitter yelling at himself, not a better feeling in the world. Yeah, I love I love those pitcher emotions that are still there. Yeah. <laughs> that's just it's just a great feeling. All that means is you did your well, you did your job very well. Yeah. And shall those feelings never go away? Just like they like when you're in there, you know, throwing water coolers around, dumping the gum, yep. you know, taking a baseball bat to something because you just gave up a five spot. They like that too. <laughs> it was both ways. Two strike pitch to Barney gets him. Breaking ball down and in. One, two, three. We're headed into the third. Rays lead five nothing.
have the lead. It's 5 0. Tonight's Geico great moment. It was on this day in 1965. A future Hall of Fame career set in motion. Jim Palmer pitching three and two thirds in relief, getting his first big league win when the Orioles beat the Yankees. And what's more, in Jim Palmer fashion, made the day more memorable when he hit a two run home run off Jim Bouton in the fourth inning of that game. Where is he when you need him? Oh, yes. Could you imagine? We could have him, Dwayne, we could have him sit in here. And recap that three and two thirds innings and the home run, yep. and we'd be to the seventh inning stretch. Yeah, break down how he set up out to take him deep. <laughs> There's a line drive base hit to left. Longoria is aboard, and now bobble out there. Saunders having trouble unloading it, and Longoria winds up at second. You know, maybe the Blue Jays didn't come ready to play today. Wait till you see this. This is a single to left field to start off the inning. Watch Michael Saunders just look. He's going to throw it in. I mean, blooper reel. Here you come. So Longoria is at second to lead off the third. Tonight's Buick GMC big matchup. Following the home run in the first, a 360 career average against Happ. And he takes that pitch for a ball. Saunders charged with the error. Pierce started to go. He checked. Wagner down there at first. The count is two and nothing. Three and oh. Blue Jays are getting action up in the bullpen here in the third. Dustin Antolin. Three and one. Pierce playing first base tonight. Getting clean up. And Steven Souza Jr. on deck. Ball four, the Rays have their first two men on. Let's check in with Rich Hollenberg right quick. Guys, let's go in the Wayback Machine. About 13 months ago, April 14th, 2015, it was the Rays' first trip up here to Toronto last season. And on a first pitch fastball from Daniel Norris, Steven Souza Jr. rocketed a home run, his first in his career as a Tampa Bay Ray to just about the spot that I'm standing right now. It's 463 feet away, but to be honest with you, that ball probably could have been traveling another 100 feet because it was trajecting still going upwards. Now, I talked to a security guard at this restaurant in center field. He said it hit the plexiglass so hard they had to remove that plate and replace it with a brand new one. A little redecorating by Steven Souza here in Rogers Center, guys. Yeah, and wherever Rich goes, fine wine is very close, <laughs> as we saw right there. Just within reach. Yeah, that's a blast. I mean, where Rich is, is it's not anywhere near us. Sousa goes after the first pitch and fouls it. So it's nowhere near the field. <laughs> yeah, any way you look at it, vertically, horizontally. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a big diagram from home plate. One one count. I don't think you get an appreciation for the size of, of Steven Souza Jr. You know, he's not a big bulky guy, but he is tall. He's got strong hands. He creates a tremendous amount of leverage. And so when he gets those arms extended and makes solid contact, that ball's gonna go, baby. Yep. You know, most power hitters, people used to talk about Hank Aaron's strong wrist, what he could do. But most 
power hitters shake hands with them. You feel it in their hands. You, you, you feel the extension from their forearms. Elbows down. A lot of strength. Yeah, there, there's no limp wrist. No, no captain limp wrist mm -hmm. when you shake hands with a, with a power hitter. If they, it, it, what you don't want them to do is turn you over. It's one right. thing to have a nice solid handshake. If they roll you over. Yeah, the rest of your body goes with it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just. <laughs> Bruises the ego. Yep. Now 3-1 to count. It's a full count now with that foul ball. Desmond Jennings on deck. Base hit in the right. Longoria will head to the plate, and the Rays get another run to make it a six to nothing ball game. Souza picking up his 17th run batted in. Boy, the Rays have answered the bell here tonight. No question about it. They are continue, continuing the pressure on Jay Happ, and this is probably going to be the hit that ends his night. Full count, shoot that ball the other way, get it into right field, and just keep adding on. Now the Rays with two in the first, three in the second. They have another run home in the third. Pitching change coming. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. By Bright House Networks. Visit BrightHouse.com. And by Furman, the Bay Area's first name in Chevrolet. Rays have six runs home, building a big early lead. Nobody out in the third. Half gone after two innings plus three men in the third. Dustin Antolin is the new pitcher. Off to a nice start down in Buffalo. Didn't make a start. 25 strikeouts in 20 innings. And his first pitch to Desmond Jennings is a strike. Antolin out of Hawaii. They say he was getting a little frustrated with his time in the minor leagues, thinking about hanging it up, and he gets the call. To the big leagues. Good thing he hung with it. Could he be any farther away from Hawaii than Toronto, Ontario, Canada in Major League Baseball? I don't think he can be. <laughs> but close to Buffalo, so he could get here in a hurry. That's right. Hot shot. Oh, it's grabbed by Donaldson. 
And as he tries to get it out of his glove looking for a double play it pops away. Well Jennings scalded that one a low liner and Donaldson with his great reflexes managed to catch it. I'll tell you what these guys had better be on their toes and Josh Donaldson certainly was a sinking line drive to his right. Now you got to go backhand side and he makes the catch just before it gets to the dirt. Steve Pierce thinking maybe he's going to be able to be on the move but that play by Donaldson no chance. First pitch to Casale is a strike. Antolin was drafted in 2008 and had spent all of that time in the minor leagues. And a slow climb. That, you know, I think that's what not a lot of people realize. You, know, you turn into a, a big league game, you're watching big league players, but you don't realize sometimes how long it takes to get here. Mm -hmm. I mean, 2008, that many seasons ago, and you're going to A ball, then to high A, then high A, then maybe the next year split a little bit of time at double A, and up you go. It's a slow, slow roll. Long one to left, deep down the line, and gone. Kirk Casale has unloaded a three run home run. Casale's fifth home run of the year, and the Rays have a four run inning now. They keep raising the bar. Two in the first, three in the second, four in the third. Well, How that, about this for Casale? <laughs> I mean, loud. We talked the other day about when he makes contact, you can hear it. And boy, that sounded great. Think about some of the contact that we've heard. I mean, coming off the bat, that sound, that distinct, oh my goodness, that ball got destroyed sound. You know, Sousa Jr., Brad Miller, Pierce, Casale. It's nine to nothing. You know, the mouthpiece is a big accessory this year. Maybe with the Rays, you're going to have to start going with some earplugs, too. <laughs> Get them, you know, the, the nice bright colors, hot pink. Yeah, it's that. Fluorescent it's yellow. Needed accessories. It's that deep sounding ring to it. Two and one to count on Kiermaier. One out in the inning. That's a strike 2 2. Well one of the things keeping this Toronto ball club afloat of course the lineup speaks for itself with the starting pitching bullpen can be an issue for this team. A little tapper. Uh oh. Antolin's throw safe at first base. Well you can't take any extra time with Kiermaier going down the line and he has a base hit. Well, Antolin doesn't have any experience with Kevin Kiermaier, number one. But this ball, a swinging bunt, basically, and you knew this was trouble. You just knew it. Right off the end of the bat, now it's a race. Forget it, he was there. Another race with the big four run inning so far. Kiermaier at first and Beckham who homered in the second inning. Up again here in the third. It's a high pop foul that will carry out a play. Well Antolin allowing the inherited runs to score on the home run by Casale so two more accounted to the Toronto Blue Jay bullpen. They have the highest inherited runners scored allowed in the uh, American League and the second worst in the majors. The Marlins bullpen has given up more as a percentage. And then the Blue Jays. Beckham got ahead three and one and then 
belted this one out to center field in the second. Uh, they took advantage of every mistake that Jay Happ made, and there were a lot of them out over the plate. And Ray swinging the big sticks here tonight. And I'll tell you what, Dwayne, that's going to be an issue for this ball club because their offense has not performed like they would have expected to this point, number one. So that could always break out at any time. Their starting pitching is leading the way. The Blue Jays are second in the American League in ERA, number one in starters ERA. Yep. That's a great sign. But if you've got a shaky bullpen, you don't contend, you do not win championships. And that's going to be an issue, and has been. Well, there's Brandon Geyer up for the third time. The Rays get eight runs off Jay Happ tonight. Geyer pops it up. Smoke making the call over from first. So the Rays send eight men to the plate. They score four times. Kurt Casale's home run, the big blast of the inning. We go to the bottom of the third. The Rays have a 9 nothing lead. Nothing from two dollar kids day to two dollar dogs senior specials to student rush the Rays have something for everyone every night of the week check out those great specials at RaysBaseball.com slash specials or call 888 fan Rays. First pitch to the top of the order Kevin Pilar is a strike. One and one. A bunt that will be foul. It's one and two. Well, with these home runs tonight, the Rays are hitting a home run per inning through the first three. They have hit 53 home runs now. And they're tied for third in the major leagues in home runs. Pollard did go as that ball popped away from Casale, but he recovers and completes the strikeout with a toss down to Pierce. Well, that's what you get when you try to bunt down nine runs. I mean, come on now. I was wondering if that's exactly what I saw. And then this this should be the result. I like it. Feeling frisky tonight. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, come on now. Swing the bat. I had that uh, the brawl from from yesterday and Odor's punch on a loop in my room. <laughs> so I apologize. You know, he's had more than one of those. Oh. 
Donaldson <laughs> takes the pitch wide all the way back into the minor leagues. There's, listen. Yeah, he's thrown that punch before. Yeah. When you watch him with that short right, that's not somebody who's new to throwing punches. Yeah. And you're right. You go back and look at some minor league video, and you see that right hand three or four times in a minor league brawl. Uh, the ironic thing about that is that he took exception to Bautista. Okay, good. Coming in at second base the way he did. All right, no problem with that, except time after time there have been cases where he's been involved, Odor, in brawls when he was the runner. Right. And doing that and more. Right. Going <laughs> That's the ironic second thing. base. Yeah. As far as Batista, he got what he deserved, I think. I think from the, the bat flip last year, you knew at some point he was going to wear it. I, 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 it, it. Not that you're advocating violence or hitting people, but you flip a bat the way he did, you're pretty much guaranteed that at some point, oh, there's a shot that Longoria comes up with on Donaldson and takes care of that for the second out. And here's what happened yesterday. Now, Matt Bush just up, and they waited till the end to hit him into the series, and then <laughs> he went in later. That never gets old. Second That's base a hard. Yep. He stayed on his feet, though. You got to give him credit for that. He doesn't have a glass jaw. Well, I think that uh, that that punch lifted him a little bit. <laughs> Might have kept him upright. Here's what I think. It, it, what I do not like about it is they waited till the last game. Yep. And and for a couple of different reasons, but I mean, as a fan, selfishly, I, we don't get to see him play again. I, th th you got to. There's got to be another Toronto, Texas game. It would be must-see TV. Oh yeah. And there's not. That's that's aw it's awful. It oh. They've deprived us by waiting until the very end. Well, we'll see. You well, know, I mean, maybe it, playoffs, it, it, but it could happen. It won't be as good if it was a regular season. You know, a hot July day <laughs> in Arlington, and everybody's already angry, and then you've got the next game after that. Oh. The, that's why I. Two one to Bautista. That's why I don't like that they waited till the last game. To yep. do it. it yeah. It deprives well, of, a, a, of a sequel. Uh, uh, John Gibbons took exception to that, no uncertain terms. Down to third foul. Count is two two. Let's go back. And uh, Sam Dyson on the hill. And here's the shot. And there's the bat flip. You do. You saw that. Some. You know, some people today think that's okay. It's no emotion. It should be fun. And, and maybe the manners of the game are changing. Pitch just missed inside. That's a whole other topic, I think, to discuss at some point, whether that's good or bad. Let's do everything on the field and turn cartwheels and all of that. <laughs> oh. Make baseball fun again. Right? Yeah. That's Smiley. what we're going to do. Smiley thought he had the strike zone there and a, a little upset he didn't get that call Bautista walks and that's a whole other topic as we take a look at this pitch and maybe down a bit so man at first two gone but there's still enough of if you want to call it the the tradition of the game that if you get a hitter who hits one out of sight and flips a bat like that it's a really good chance that he's going to hear about it in the future. Well, he did. Okay. If you're going to do that, then it's like civil disobedience. If you're going to if, if you're going to do the crime, well, be ready to pay for it. Well, he paid for it. He got hit. Hit him in the ribs. Okay, good. Now, it could have been over then, except for the hard slide into second, and then that started everything again. Yeah. It, it was a it, it followed the, the you know, kind of what is going to happen. You know, a hitter gets drilled like that. You know, it's on purpose. Then you know if there's a play at second, he's going to go in hard. If he goes in hard, especially with these new slide rules, that whoever's there, the second baseman, the shortstop, well, with the shift, even the third baseman, they're not going to like it too much. And then from there, who knows where it goes? And that's yeah, exactly and we what we saw last night. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I I'll one up you. Talking about the old baseball stuff. Well, I'm it, used to that. And I got no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying, away from that, the way that Danny Valencia 
Oh, yeah. Strutted oh. around Tropicana Field yesterday, oh, that, just yeah. making a mockery, hitting home runs, skipping, taking forever to get around the bases. And the fact that the Rays pitching staff did absolutely nothing about it, I didn't like that Here's one the deal. Day. You didn't want up me, you just beat me to the punch because I feel exactly the same way. He took 30 minutes to round the bases here. Right. No one seemed Low to. Fives. No one seemed to ma ma care about that. Nobody seemed to care now, about it at all. And here's the practical point of that: you move him the next time he's up, he's not as comfortable. He may not hit two or three home runs that day. Right. If you move him after right. that first home That's run. That's right. And you, you don't have to hit him. You know, you just when he takes his good old time to get around the bases, you don't have to hit him. Just like you said, move his feet, brush him back. Strike three call to Encarnacion. Now he's not happy. We go through three, nine, nothing, Rays. Series. Duke Energy proud to support the Rays and Tampa Bay Area veterans. For every game the Rays win, Duke Energy donates $1,000 to area agencies working in support of our veterans. Duke Energy powering Florida with more than just energy by supporting our veterans and other local charities. Fourth inning finds Taylor Motter leading off. Takes the pitch wide, a ball, no strikes. <laughs> one and one. Otter with an infield hit, his first time, making his major league debut and picking up that hit right away. Two. And, and only with the Rays do, are you hitting 190 in AAA, you get some power numbers, some stolen bases, get called to the big leagues, get your major league debut as a start, and hit second. There you are. How about that? Mm -hmm. And you're right, he led the Bulls in home runs with four and in stolen bases with eight. So he can steal a base, he can hit a home run, he can play all over the field. Starting at shortstop tonight. Put him on the infield, put him in the outfield. Lifts it into short right. Bautista makes the catch on it. You know, it was funny the, the way that baseball changes on a lot of different levels, and we've hit on a couple of them. But how about the versatile utility type player that was a guy that used to be it wasn't frowned upon it was just well you could really never nail down one position so you you can play decently at a bunch yep. and that was how it's looked at now it is such a valuable commodity 
those guys you are sought after now. Yeah. And that really is the area of the race I think pioneered. You know for a long time. They had the idea that while they might have some other disadvantages in terms of resources and market size and all of that. They were going to have to figure out ways to complement their approach to putting a team together. And, and nobody did that better than Ben Zobers. And he was the guy. Poster child. And you know if you get right down to it you think about that deal. They got Mitch Talbot a right handed pitcher. Who they thought could be a starting pitcher. Maybe to fill out the back end of a rotation. And at the time he was a much bigger name in that deal. Than Ben Sobers who was playing uh, I think a double A Corpus Christi at the time. And Talbot had had some significant triple A time and some success there. And I think there was some genuine thought that there was a pitching prospect they could add to the organization. And Zobris, as we all got to know Ben, not only a bright guy, but with great character and work ethic. And he made himself into a, such a valuable commodity. And we've seen that with the Rays and now beyond. But you're right. I guys used to think if, if they had asked most players before the race pioneered that, the players going to think that's a demotion. Yeah. He took that Zobris as an opportunity to stay in the big leagues and be more valuable to his team, and has built a great career doing that. And really, a whole movement. He's opened up, you know, an area of the game. That is new in many ways. And it seems like every team has one or is trying to acquire one. Yep, versatility a key. And here's another guy, and Steve Pierce, after the walk to Longoria, one on one out. And how valuable is he now with Logan Forsythe down? And let's just face it, Logan Forsythe was the best player on this team. Yeah. So he goes out. Pierce. Playing first tonight, but handled himself very well at second base. And he did too. He really did a nice job in a couple of games that we saw him. And we'll see, you know, even more of it. He's going to get some extended time in the lineup and specifically at second base with Logan Forsythe itching to return. How great it must be for a manager to have a guy like Pierce and his bat and you can get him more and more at bats because he can play multiple positions and not hurt you at those positions. Well our first trip into Baltimore and when we heard from Buck Showalter and what yep. he thought about Steve Pierce that says it all that's right that says it all if Buck says he's your his kind of guy I mean that's high praise yeah it is it, that means you are you are a guy and that's what he calls him he's a, he's my guy counts 2 2 now Ray's facing Dustin Antolin He's in relief of Jay Happ. Steven Souza Jr. will be up there next. Jammed him a bit, popped it up foul. And Martin trying to find his way to it. The ball hit the just the very top of the dugout. So no chance on that one. Well, you can see Mark just walking back there. He still doesn't appear to be 100%. He's not a guy who's going to let you know unless he just can't help it. And with the assortment of injuries, including the neck, that bothered him when we saw the Blue Jays down at Tropicana Field. And they say it's been moving in the right direction. He's had more mobility back there. Can you imagine trying to hit and catch with a stiff neck? No. Hardly get out of bed. Mm -hmm. 
Fly ball toward the line and right for Bautista. So two gone. Tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Jay Happ off to a great start. But how about this against the Rays? He's 5 and 0, had no decisions there, but in three starts now, a 798 ERA against the Rays. How about that? And 151 listen. against everybody else. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's absolutely had everybody's number. Those other five starts are five wins against the Rays. It looks like two no decisions and what should be a loss. Steven Souza Jr., boy, he had a nice pitch. Liked it, fouled it back, strike one. No, I'm just so impressed, and Dwayne, you hit it on it earlier, about the way that this team lost yesterday. You know, coming off of a sweep against the Mariners, you come home against Oakland, who had been playing awful, a terrible road trip. Boston had just gotten done throwing about 41 runs on them in three games, and they take two out of three from you in your own building in that kind of fashion. What is going to be the mindset of the team here tonight? And, boy, have they, uh, have they answered in a big way. Well, Oakland tried to... In a number of instances, give the game to the Rays, and the Rays wound up giving it right back to them. Kevin Cash had said afterwards, he said, I know it, good things, it only counts as one loss, but boy, it seems like a lot more than that. There's a base hit in the hole. Susan Jr. is aboard. Longoria moves up to second. Well, you know, you take a loss like that, and as difficult as it is to deal with, if you could turn around and make it a positive by going out the next night and beyond. Now, Ray's doing it tonight with a quick start, a powerful start here tonight. Then the idea is to continue to carry that forward. Well, motivation enough. You're playing a team within the division, a team that's ahead of you in the standings by a game. So you're going to be more than likely tied with them. Here's Jennings shooting this one into the gap in left center field. Longoria scores. Susie Jr. will score on the double by Desmond Jennings. That makes it 11 to nothing. And Jennings continues to hit the baseball here in Toronto. Well, and he could very easily have three hits already. That line drive that Josh Donaldson caught down at third base in between the base hit up the middle and then this shot out into left center field. And the Rays just will not quit. Mistake out over the plate. They are not missing tonight at all. They have 11 runs, 11 hits. Jennings at second. Here's Kurt Casale. Tell you what, for Toronto Blue Jay pitchers here tonight, the home plate must look like a landing strip. Just right there, right down Broadway. And that's where they've been. And Sally with a double and a three run home run tonight. Oh, two. Here's Homer in the first. Beckham hit one out in the second. Casale homered in the third. Jennings has doubled home two runs in the fourth. Two strikes to the count on Casale right now. More action. Joe Biggini up in the bullpen. Two and two. And now a little conversation between Mike Winters and Russell Martin. Well, Russell Martin, you talked about the neck issue. Not real happy here with the score tonight. Wasn't real happy in his at bat. We saw him talking to himself, yelling at himself on the bench. And probably not real happy that he hasn't put down a good sequence of fingers here tonight. Because it's not working. And the 
count is full. This is a game right here that calls for Scott Atchison. Yeah, how could a guy like that retire? He could pitch forever. I, right. Yep. And effectively. Help me put an addition on my house in the winter. Popper short right. Barney angling out. That's Smoke taking charge from first base. Well, the Rays add two more. Leave one and have an 11 to nothing lead. Greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Carlos Beltran. Beltran went deep yesterday. His eighth home run of the season. And number 400 of his career. The fourth switch hitter, by the way, to reach 400 in his career. And he's in great company. Mickey Mantle, Eddie Murray, and Chipper Jones. Those are uh, the kind of numbers that will get people talking about uh, some great awards post career. I mean, it's Hall of Fame company right there. Justin Smoke leads it off, and the pitch is a strike. Smoke walked his first time. Smiley through the first three innings, facing 13 hitters has had eight three ball counts. One and one right now. Here's the home run by Beltron yesterday for 400 of his career. Smoke fouls it back and out of play. And while he has had eight three ball counts he's had 10 first pitch strikes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how about those? Th this whole game <laughs> has is different from what we normally see. And that's usually where Drew Smiley thrives. Yeah. I mean, he gets ahead of you, he stays ahead of you, and he puts you away. That's just the bottom line. Tonight it's been get ahead of you, and then I'm going to work on some things, and we're going to get to a full count, and then I'll get you out. <laughs> Foul ball headed straight back out of play. Well, the Rays jumped out with two runs in the first, three in the second, four in the third, two again in the fourth inning. Now the Blue Jays bat in the bottom of the fourth. Base hit through the hole. Smoke picks up the first hit for the Blue Jays. And it's a leadoff single.
Well, this pitch working its way down and in, and Justin Smoke just drops the barrel right to that baseball. Hit that ball hard. And he's smiling. He's not a guy that gets a lot of ground balls, but boy, he could use one here. Especially when you see that pitch count up 74 already, no outs here in the fourth. He faces Troy Tulowinski. He got him on strikes. After getting the first two men in the first, he walked the bases loaded, did Smiley, and then got Tulowitzki to strike out. Starts him with a pitch wide. is up he's behind here 2 and 0 you know here's the thing Drew Smiley has an 11 run lead and he's got to get six outs to qualify for a win he's rec recorded just nine outs and we're already approaching 80 pitches it's a strike just a little bit off here tonight and you know you know Drew and you know his mindset as a pitcher that he is in attack mode. He wants to be in the zone and coming right after these guys. Maybe a little bit of a mechanical issue, not allowing that right now. Because he's certainly missing with a, a I mean, a, a ton of pitches. That stat, Dwayne, that you were talking to me about in between innings, it was incredible about the first inning. Oh, yeah. He had 32 pitches in the first inning, 13 strikes. How and about did, that? And didn't give up any runs. Nope. That's almost impossible to do. And now with this full count here, this is his ninth three ball count of the game. Yeah, you break down that first inning, 32 pitches, 13 strikes. Left the bases loaded, no hits, no runs. Three two to Tulowitzki. Strike three call. Tulowitzki getting rid of the bat, trying to draw the walk. But he's caught looking. And walks back. Whoa! It appears that Mike Winters has ejected Tulowitzki. And here comes John Gibbons. Tulowitzki. Threw the bat away. He's headed to first. Called out on strikes on the pitch down. And uh, Gibbons, you know, yesterday they had eight ejections in that uh, Texas Toronto game at Arlington. Six Blue Jays, including Gibbons. And he really can't say much about strikes. Otherwise, he's gone. Ejection here. Well, this is a, an extremely frustrated team here in Toronto. That fastball working its way down in the zone, right at the kneecaps. And you're right, Tulowitzki tried to sell it. Like, boom, quick, yep, I'm out of here. And no, no, Mike Winters was having none of that. Took a couple steps See, waiting for that ejection. And I don't like that. I mean, you know, Troy Tulowitzki, you know, walked by him, said that wasn't a strike, was walking away from him, his head never turned, and Mike Winters was kind of following and listening. I mean, what, what's the point of that? Tulowitzki was not talking to him. Maybe he was, but no one in the world knew it. He was just walking back to the dugout right here. Okay, they exchange words. Now look at Winters keeps going. He keeps walking. Tulowitzki's head never turns, and you fire him out of there. That's baloney. I don't like that at all. At all. Now, if he turns around, okay, fire him out of here. But well, that right there, no way. That's what umpires used to look for. Yeah. If you turn around, that's right. say something, then okay. But Tulowitzki just walked a straight line back. That's it. That's it. Well, 
Let's take a look. He's still there. I wonder if they got Gibbons for maybe, saying something. And maybe it so was I'm Gibbons. I'm going to say it's probably Gibbons. Because, yeah, uh, what would Tula Whiskey get thrown out for? Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. And the manager can't say anything about balls and strikes. Right. And so apparently Gibbons said something from the dugout while Winters was looking in that direction. So he got him. Saunders a fly ball to right. That's caught by Sousa Jr. Well, I'm going to call. I'm going to calm down then, because this seems to make more sense. Yeah. Let's take a look. There's Gibbons. Balls down. And that's what he said. He goes, "Who me?" <laughs> that's exactly. He said the balls down, and then that must have been when winners fired it. He said, "Who me?" And now he's like, well, I might as well come out and get my money's worth. He says, why? Th that's, I mean, all he said was the ball's down. Yeah. I mean, managers and, and hitting coaches yell that from the dugout all the time. Yeah. That's right. Strike the count on Martin. There's a lot of angry people up here in Toronto tonight. <laughs> it's usually such a nice city. Yeah. People on edge. Yep. Feisty. One and one. And you know, Mike Winters, is, he's done that before to some managers. And I remember he chased uh, Bruce Bochy a couple of times. It's kind of a similar situation. So he's he's not known for taking a lot, and, and he didn't get a lot there. <laughs> he got very little, actually, from Gibbons. <laughs> Pierce is after this pop up under it, makes the catch, then retires Martin. Lead off base hit, the man left on. We're headed into the fifth. It's 11 0. Lead this game and move into the fifth inning. Kurt Casale, you see right there, has a three run home run tonight. Steve Pierce has a two run homer. Tim Beckham, a two run home run. Joe Biagini is the new pitcher. Antolin worked a couple innings in relief of half. He was charged with three runs. The Rays put eight runs on the board against the starter, Jay Happ. Well, the, right now the Toronto Blue Jays looking for somebody to slow down this raise onslaught here tonight. Eugene gets the opportunity. He's on for the 10th time. I'll tell you what, while watching Rays games night after night after night, always seemingly playing close games. You don't get too many like this. Kevin Kiermeyer goes after the first pitch. Pounding it out of play. Kiermeyer, then Beckham again, and Geyer do up. No 
two. Upstairs. His foot. Down he goes. Instant pain right here. Right off the instep. Knocked that leg right out from underneath him. He's taking some time to recover from that. Not a professional courtesy. Martin goes out to talk with his pitcher. Ray's starting a three city trip tonight Toronto, Detroit, Miami. Two and two. Judy will be 26 years old later on this month. His first big league action this year. He chopped the first and Smoke steps on the bag. Here Myers the first out. Ray's leadoff man retired in the fifth. Eugenie's one of these guys who has fared better throughout his career, even his minor league career, better against left handed hitters than right handed hitters. Beckham misses the fastball. That went up around 93, 94. Yeah, good downhill playing too, and some late sinking action on it. I'd say one of the big reasons why we saw it, uh, it on a pitch to Kiermaier is that slow curveball. Big break, a lot of depth. You can see that that's a pitch that if you can keep away from a left hander, he's going to roll over that all day long. One and one to count. A shot. It's got home run distance, but it's foul. Beckham after hitting that home run to center field in the second inning. Plenty of distance on that one, but on the wrong side of the left field line. An inning and a third on Saturday. That was in the Texas series. Gave up a hit. No runs. Oh, strike call. Now Beckham's not happy. Caught looking and out on strikes for the second time. You're usually not getting uh, rung up on curveballs that high in the zone. That's why Beckham's upset, but that was a strike. Follow Rays Baseball Live with the MLB. Dot com at bad app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Back around to the top of the order. Pitch thrown into the dirt. 1 0 on Brandon Geyer. Brandon, a big day yesterday. Two home runs, five runs batted in, and the only Ray not to be on base tonight. Oh, 
One and one. Every spot in the order has at least one hit. Raise 11 runs, 11 hits. That holding true with the exception of Geyer, who's 0 for 3 tonight. There's a pitch right on the corner. Maybe a little off. It's 1 and 2. It's the breakout, top to bottom in the Rays lineup, including Taylor Motter, who had an infield hit, picking up the first hit of the game back in the first inning. 2 2, the count to Geyer. Do it again. Ground ball and a strikeout. 2 2 the count. Another foul ball. Eugenie, another Rule 5 player picked up by the Blue Jays out of the San Francisco Giants organization, originally drafted in 2011 by the Giants. There's a roller to the left side. Donaldson up, and his throw is right there. Three up, three down, go the Rays. We're through four and a half, and the Rays lead this game 11-0. on Fox Sports Sun Taylor Motter will be leading off for the Rays the next half frame and obviously you can imagine what a huge thrill it is for him playing in his first big league game getting his first big league hit and he also gets a brand new suit a tux to be exact now of course it's an orange tux and it's an ugly orange tux but that's what happens when you're a rookie making your first major league road trip that was courtesy of Logan Morrison now I don't know if they know the movie Dumb and Dumber in Newfoundland but one thing I do know now here in the Rogers Center is they know Rays baseball. I ran into a family of four, the Penny family, Brad, Carla, Reed, and Ryder. They are from Newfoundland. They were visiting Toronto, ran into Wayne Gretzky, who got them tickets to the game. He told them that they're Rays fans. Believe it or not, guys, I know Wayne from being up here last year. Wayne brokered a relationship. We got him some Rays gear, and now everybody's a Rays fan worldwide. That is a true story. Strange but true. And Rays fans popping up everywhere. They do. They do. From Newfoundland now. The whole family. 
pitches up to Darwin Barney. The count is one and two. Tapper foul. This one is foul out of play. Top of the order will be next. Up the right side, that's going to be in there, a base hit. Seems a junior will keep Hardy at first. So for the second consecutive inning, the Blue Jays put the leadoff man aboard. And two hits tonight. We're in the fifth, and the pitch count for Smiley in the mid 90s now. And, and that's what you wonder: how long is Kevin Cash going to allow him to go? You know, this is one of those games where, because the lead is so big, you'd like to get more length out of your starter to kind of save that bullpen. But it looks like tonight, and to right, Susie Jr. is there to make the catch, and Pilar is retired. Throw back to first, but Barney's back in. Well, that's a way to do it. One pitch. Yeah. And the first out. And here's what you need to do right now. Help the ground ball double play hitting over. Josh Donaldson do up. Ray's trying to get a double play out of the Viking. <laughs> you know, we've learned that he did make a cameo appearance on History Canada's Vikings he shoots this one foul down the left side strike one That's Canadian Irish historical drama and he fit right in it, it not surprising not surprising at all well, we saw him graded up at Tropicana Field one day we saw him do a lot of stuff at <laughs> Tropicana Field all three days yes we did Lines it toward the corner. One hop. Barehanded retrieval by Jennings, but it's going to be a double as Barney goes to third. Donaldson's 10th double of the year, second and third. Now he came in with good numbers off of Drew Smiley, and he was on him in this at bat. Able to go out and get that pitch and pull it with power. That ball looked to be really down at the outer half. And he's still able to shoot it down there, one hop the wall. Scoring threat here for the Blue Jays. Jose Bautista has walked twice. And there's a first pitch strike. Bautista's walked more than anybody in the American League. 33 times with the two tonight. Base head in the center. Barney scores. Donaldson stops at third. And Batista makes it 11 to 1. That ball rifled up the middle. There was no chance that they were going to run uh, Kevin Kiermeyer, but the Blue Jays putting something together here. The pitch count now at 100. Runners on the corner. Boy, that another one, another off-speed pitch down in the zone, and Bautista just follows it down and shoots the gap. This throw got a little sideways here too. Well, that's a hundred pitches. For Smiley, 42 strikes. That, that's that. Ground ball back to the mound. Smiley to second one. Beckham to first for two. Encarnacion grounds into the 1 4 3 
double play. And we're through five with the Rays leading 11 to one. Offensive night for the Rays started by Steve Pierce with a two run home run to left field in the first. Tim Beckham jumped on a 3 1 delivery, building a home run in the second inning to make it 5 to nothing. And before the third inning was complete, Kurt Casale hit a three run home run, capping a four run third. Rays added two more in the fourth on a double by Jennings. And they have an 11 to 1 lead. Two Smiley in the Rays dugout. A conversation with Jim Hickey. Well, what an interesting night it's been for Smiley to get all of this run support on a night when he's thrown more pitches out of the strike zone than in the strike zone. But he leads 11 to 1. And what is remarkable about that is we're 101 pitches into his outing and still more balls than strikes. Yep. And you've only given up one run. I mean, I'll tell you that uh, that first pitch he made to Encarnacion to get the double play, maybe the biggest first pitch strike he's made tonight. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, a couple more, I mean, we don't even want to think about it, but regardless, this could be the most impressive in a very strange way the most impressive outing of the year for Drew Smiley because to go out there five innings over a hundred pitches give up just one run and throw more balls than strikes is really all you think it's impossible yeah it's incomprehensible and yet here we are that's why this game you never know what you're going to see because none of that makes sense Seen some changes made by the Blue Jays defensively here in the sixth inning. Taylor Motter goes to three and two. Steve Geltz up in the bullpen for the Rays. Motter chops this one foul. They have Josh Tolley now doing the catching as we play in the sixth inning. Andy Burns is at third. Goins in the game. And shortstop. Carrera. Ezekiel Carrera in the game in right field. Here's Motter hitting one back into left field. And Saunders started to feel for the wall, had room, and made the catch. One out in the sixth inning for Evan Longoria. Singled and scored in the third, walked and scored in the fourth. Strike. Joe 
Biagini, the right hander. Picks up the corner there. No two. Third, Burns up with it. The throw to first in time. Well, it's five in a row, retired by Biagini since taking over. And you know what? I was just going to say, it's no wonder that the Toronto Blue Jays looked at Joe Biagini and thought, you know what? Worth a Rule 5 draft pick. And then he went out and, and made the team. It makes sense. He looks good. He works downhill, got a good curveball, got a fastball with some life on it, especially when he keeps it down in the zone. Steve Pierce has homered and walked. Two runs batted in. Two runs scored. Pitch in on him and he pops it up. Barney, the second baseman, out to make the catch. And again, three up, three down. Bottom of the sixth coming up, 11-1. Today's baseball on Fox Sports Sound is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by your Southern Chevy dealers. Steve Geltz will be the new pitcher. Drew Smiley working five. I, I had to, I had to recalculate those. Looking at my scorebook and uh, the strikeout, uh, the strikes, the non-strikes. He had 59 strikes out of 101 pitches. So that's it's better. Way different. It makes more sense. Yeah. And as you can tell, I don't keep track of all the strikes. Outs maybe. Maybe most of the time. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, want to know the count to Justin Smoke. Well, I'll tell you what though, it, it still doesn't take away from what you said about that first pitch ground ball double play. How important was that? Because it ended his night. That was very big to get him five innings. Jennings takes care of Smoke. Well, Sue's has moved over to play center and. Motter is now out there in right field. As we mentioned, he can play all over the place. So Kiermeyer's 
out of the game. Foul that ball off his foot. You wonder. You wonder if that if that is it for cautionary. I mean, let's face it. Kevin Kiermaier, one of his biggest assets are his wheels. Ryan Goins. Gelt's going to have to cover first. It takes the throw from Beckham. So two gone. Two up, two down. Let's quickly check with Rich. Guys, you might be surprised to see Steve Geltz on the mound. Gave up the eventual game-winning home run in that game three against the A's yesterday. He woke up this morning with a completely swollen shut right eye. It looks a little better now that he's in the game. But he walked into the clubhouse this afternoon. He looked like he was in that fight in Arlington with Rugnet Odor. He barely could see out of the right eye. Took some medicine, some allergy medicine. He's feeling much better now. He's going to get himself checked out by a specialist when he returns to the Tampa St. Pete area. He said this is the third time this season that's already happened to him, and he has no idea why, guys. Well, back in action here tonight despite all that. Saunders takes the pitch down for a ball. Yeah, Morrison's at first base now. Did he go? Yes, he did. It's one and one. Shift on for Saunders. One and two. Beckham in the middle on the right side and Pierce the right side of second base and strike three call a one two three sixth inning on to the seventh eleven to one. Clearly out in front of this ball game, 11 to 1 as we head into the top of the seventh inning. And here's what's coming up tomorrow on Rays Live, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Going to have an interview with Chris Archer as he gets ready to take the hill. And uh, apparently, I'm going to be sitting down with pitching coach Jim Hickey, and that should be a lot of fun. Yes, we'll go for a right. Our, he's, he's promoing his big interview. We'll watch him tomorrow. We'll head into the seventh inning. Drew Storr in the new pitcher. And a shot up the third base line off the bat of Steven Souza Jr. And he's headed to second. The ball went to the corner and stayed there. Saunders had to go in after it. Third hit of the night for Steven Souza Jr. Storin follows Hap 
Antolin and Biagini to the hill for Toronto and he's greeted this way. Well and it has not been easy going for Drew Storen here in 2016 with the Blue Jays. He's got an ERA of 8.25 in 15 games. He finds himself you know he came over in spring training. He was competing for the closers role with Roberto Osuna. It's not going well. Desmond Jennings takes a strike and you know the ending for him with the Nationals you know where he had some save numbers there and then all of a sudden they made that trade for Jonathan Papelbon they plug him in as the closer and Drew Storen's performance at that point started to plummet and it's kept on going here in 16. Ahead of Jennings 0 2. You know, the Blue Jays were hopeful he would be a big part of their bullpen. And it's a bullpen that has been problematic for them. Yeah, like I said, uh, Roberto Osuna kind of ran away with the, the closers role. So then you think, okay, Drew Storm, Brett Cecil are going to be the setup guys. And Cecil off to a bad start. Storm, same thing. Storm strikes out Jennings, got him to reach. So after the double by Souza, Jennings strikes out. He's two for four. Kurt Casale connecting in the third inning for his fifth home run of the season. Kirk. One. Casale with a 1 1 pitch right down the line and left. Know that he's more than capable of doing that, and a lot of times he'll, he'll get him in bunches. You're hopeful of that happening. Strike away from him. 0 oh, 2. Yeah, if you're a hitter at this point in this game, you better go up there ready to swing the bat because if it's close, it's getting called. And a miss. Good ball sweeping away from him. A couple of good sliders to get a couple of strikeouts to Jennings and Casale. So Brad Miller hitting now. Hey, when I sit down with uh, with Hick tomorrow, any, yep. anything you want me to ask him? Yeah. Uh, Taken. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll look forward to that. Uh, the pitch is down to Miller. You know, one of the things that we talked about earlier, you always have to be judicious about this. You're not asking a pitcher to hit somebody. But, you know, how do you handle that? Even if you have a young staff, maybe a guy hits a home run. Hits it a mile, takes 30 minutes running around the bases. You don't want him to be comfortable at the plate the rest of the day. So how do you handle that? Rays did not do that yesterday. Ooh, a tough question. Yeah. This is going to be really good. Hard hitting. I'll have to give him a heads up that this is not going to be some fluff piece. <laughs> Never is with you. <laughs> yeah, you get the... Uh, Get that lone light bulb out to hang over your interviewee's head. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to say. I, I'm going to, when I finish my interview, I'm going to pull out that little card and I'm going to be like, now this is a question from Dwayne <laughs> from Brooksville. <laughs> and he wants to know. <laughs> so Evan Longoria getting a little. Breather over there after starting this game. Rays change the infield around. Miller hitting in the eighth spot. Kiermaier left when Sousa Jr. moved over to center. Motter moved out to right. He changes on the infield. Tim Beckham. Two 
Two to Miller. Hey, I got a question for you. Yep. Brad Miller doesn't wear his pants down. He does tonight. Right? Yeah. And they're length. always up. Yes, they are. He always shows the full stir. That's right. And he's out on strikes. So three strikeouts in the inning for Storm. Bottom of the seventh coming. The Rays up 11 to 1. Big offensive night for the Rays. They struck early and struck often, building an 11 to nothing lead at the end of four. It's now 11 to one, and our game moves on. Bottom half of the seventh. Josh Tolley, who took over behind the plate an inning ago from Martin, will bat. Ryan Webb, the new Rays pitcher. Pitches. Low. Barney, the second baseman, will be next. There's a line drive, and it's just over the head of Miller. The extra length on those pants weighed him down. Short pants, he gets that extra inch or two and makes the grab. Yep. Just a little lighter off your feet. Yeah. Totally has a hit. It was close. It was close. Almost the heck of a play there by Miller. The Darwin Barney. He has scored the run for Toronto tonight when he let off their fifth inning with a single, eventually driven home by Bautista. Ground ball. Beckham, Miller one, first base, not in time there. Well, they, you know, this is the one thing about Ryan Webb that you love. Gives up a base hit, he's always going to put himself in position because of the sink, sinking action on his fastball and the fact that he gets a lot of ground balls. The pitch here by Tim Beckham took way too long to get to Brad Miller, and that's why the Rays didn't turn that. They put themselves in position to do it, but the backhanded flip. Just took forever to get there, and yeah, look at Tim Beckham's thinking right there. How would I have done that differently to get it there quicker? First pitch to Kevin Pilar. He takes it for a strike. Pilar 0 for 3, line to right his last time. Into center field, 
Susie Jr. makes the catch. So two away. And Josh Donaldson. Well, this is going to be Burns. I beg your pardon. He took over Andy Burns in Donaldson's spot. Strike. Donaldson finished the night one for three with a double his last time up. One and one. Burns came up ten days ago from Buffalo. to short caught by Miller to retire the side. A hit the man left. We go to the eighth, 11 1, Tampa Bay. on Fox Sports Sun is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. By Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. And by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Rays have an 11 to 1 lead. As they come in to hit in the eighth. Drew Storen worked an inning. Gave up a hit, struck out three. Chad Gerardo, the lefty, the new pitcher now for the Blue Jays, making his eighth appearance. Well, he's worked a total of six innings, hasn't walked anybody, four strikeouts, opponent's average of 143. So I'd say uh, Chad off to a good start here in Toronto. Tim Beckham will be the first man to face him. Beckham owns a two run home run tonight, his first home run of the year. Ground ball third long throw by Burns and it's perfect right there. That was a strong throw by Burns because he had to close ground towards the line and back up and then unleash it across the field. Nice play. Now let's take a look at it. And another. Brandon Geyer shooting one deep to left. That ball is going to be off the wall. He's going to dig for two, and the throw is not in time. He hustles his way into second base with a double. Saunders got a great carom right back to him, played it well, and made it close at second base. 
So Geyer picks up his sixth double of the year. Well, you knew Brandon Geyer. They're not keeping him in first base. He's going to go for two on this. Problem is he hit it so hard, and it got out there so quick and off the wall right to Saunders. This allowed him a play, a nice, strong throw. And we're just fortunate that Brandon Geyer on that slide into second base didn't jam something. That's a heck of a throw. Coming in hot. Geyer in scoring position for Taylor Motter. The pitch low and inside. So Geyer with the double into the act. The Rays now have 13 hits, 11 runs, 13 hits. It's one and one. Logan Morrison is on deck. He's occupying the spot originally occupied by Evan Longoria. Hunter got his first big league hit, an infield hit, his first time up. Back in the first inning. Spread three fly balls around since then. One to center, one to right. And the last time he sent Saunders to the warning track and left. Nice to get that first one out of the way right away. You have to think about it. It's done. Go play baseball. I guarantee you, when you get called up, you're thinking, okay, I get to play tonight. I want to get that, that first hit. You're, it's on the mind. Not anymore because of this right here. And he takes advantage of Jay Happ. Slow to cover. Beats him to the bag. And that was the beginning. He scored the first run. He scored on Pierce's home run. The Rays scored 11 runs over the first four innings before the Blue Jays got on the board with a run in the fifth. Full count now. The way Motters hit the ball to all fields tonight. So he not only plays all over the field, but apparently hits the ball all over the field as well. Looking for holes, looking for hits. Looking for loopholes. That's right. And there's ball four. He's on again. So he draws a walk. Support your favorite Rays players by voting with the eSurance All-Star Game ballot at RaysBaseball.com slash vote. You can vote up to five times a day to get Evan Longoria, Logan Forsyth, Kevin Kierbeyer, and the rest of your Rays team to the All-Star Game. So go to RaysBaseball.com slash vote. Logan Morrison with men at first and second. In against the lefty. Sends a fly ball back at third. Burns on the run and comes just short. He was approaching the stands and is just short of grabbing that one. Yep, started counting his steps. A little gator arm action here. Feeling the wall coming. And he ends up short. Listen, you're going to make that run all the way over there. No, it gives Morrison another chance. Geyer's at second. Motter's at first. One out. Strike, it's 0 2. Morgan 
looking for that first run batted in. Takes one wide. They could get Geyer in, it would give the Rays an even dozen in the run department. Hopper that skips by into right field. Here comes Geyer to the plate, and he is out at the plate. Logan Morrison got one into right and is denied that first RBI. Carrera cuts down Geyer trying to score from second. You gotta be kidding me. That was it. That's what Logan's saying right now. Ezekiel Carrera, nice throw. We saw Saunders early almost get Geyer, and Carrera does. Well, he's gone now 85 at bats without a run batted in. And you thought for sure he could get one there. That left hand never got to home plate, forced right out of there by Tolley. So Morrison at first with a base hit. Potter up to second. Steve Pierce, who started the night at first, now playing third, looks at a strike. Into the dirt. One and one. And over to third goes Potter. So he's not just hanging out at second base for no reason. Ball in the dirt, he moves up. Anticipation, you see the secondary lead and the ball in the dirt, a little shuffle and off he goes. First and third, two gone. One and two on Pierce. Two and two. Gerardo, the fifth pitcher of the night, utilized by the Blue Jays. It's Dana Evelyn in the bullpen for the Rays. Yeah, that's the tough thing for manager John Gibbons in a game like this is how to dole out the innings of that bullpen when your starter gets knocked out so early. Base head up the middle. Potter scores. Over to third goes Morrison. Pierce drives in his third run, and the Rays do make it, and even does it. It's 12 to 1 now. Well, not taking the foot off the pedal. Everybody wants to have a good at bat. Everybody wants to get in on the action. And Steve Pierce right here he just hammers that ball up the middle. Twelve runs, 15 hits for the Rays. Steven Souza Jr. It's a three hit night for Souza Jr. No ball, no strikes. Half work two, Antolin two, Biagini two, Storen one, Gerardo in his first inning. He's behind Susie Jr. 2 0. Chavez, the right hander, now up in the bullpen for the Blue Jays. Ground ball third. Burns to second to the force. And the Rays settle for a run. We go to the bottom of the eighth 12 1.
Game in the opening game of this road trip for the Rays. As we go to the bottom of the eighth. Still to come on Rays Live, the post game presented by Checkers. Brian and I will be around to anchor the coverage. Kevin Cash will have his post game press conference. We'll have that. Rich Hollenberg will gather interviews from the clubhouse. And the Rays coming in off a disappointing loss at home yesterday. Jumped out early to a big lead tonight. Dana Evelyn, pitcher number four for the Rays, he faces Ezekiel Carrera. First at bat for Carrera, who's now in right field, and the pitch is a strike. One and one, Smiley. Worked five innings tonight, gave up one run, four hits. He walked four and struck out six. 59 strikes and 101 pitch performance. And the check swing, and it's two and one. It was the kind of performance that is not what you normally come to expect. He had 10 three ball counts in the first. Three and a third innings of this game. And then pitched five innings. So he qualifies with this big lead. He's looking for his second win. Yeah, Drew is not sharp. Not as sharp as, as we've seen him. But effective. I mean, you'd like to have got him deeper into the game, no question. Back into center field. Susan Jr. goes back. It's going to be over his head. Bounding over the wall for a double. So Evelyn greeted by the bat of Ezekiel Carrera gives up the two base hit. And, and that was almost a highlight reel, unbelievable play by Sousa Jr. That ball was smoked. And watch him get on his horse. And this is going to be directly over his head. And it was close. Boy, that would have been a heck of a play. Gathered himself before he made contact with the wall. A great effort by Susan Jr. Could you imagine if he makes that catch and, and the little exchange that he had the other day with Kiermaier in center field when he made that little hop on the fly ball? Oh, yeah. He makes that catch and he goes, listen, anybody can do it. <laughs> anybody can do it. Could you imagine? You're Those out of the game. You foul over. the ball off your foot. Yeah. Have to go out there and make catches like that. Now another one into center one hop. Carrera is going to head to the plate. Throw will come through not in time. Encarnacion makes it 12 to 2. Evelyn greeted by a double and an RBI single. He's in the middle of the field and Carnacion gets out and around it. Base hit into center field drives that run in. And to your point, Dwayne, when he was talking about, oh, foul of foot off, ball off your foot, and now I get to play, you know there would have been a Wally Pitt reference. Oh, of there course. Were, <laughs> that would have been probably the first thing <laughs> dropped. And the strike to Justin Smoke. The smoke taking full advantage of an opportunity here in Toronto to play first base. And he has swung the bat well. Ground ball short. Out at second. Beckham's flip over to first, and that's a 6 4 3. Miller Beckham to Morrison. So the double play takes care of Encarnacion's base hit. Suddenly the bases are empty with two outs. Ryan Goins will hit. Grounded out in the sixth inning, 0 for 1 after taking over for Troy Tulowitzki. That's a strike. Well, 
back. Talk about position perfectly. Miller right there throws out Goins. A run, two hits through eight, 12, two rings. Game two of the series comes your way tomorrow and Chris Archer will be after his third win of the year. We'll greet you at 6.30 on Fox Sports Sun with the commencement of our coverage leading up to the first pitch. Archer coming off the no decision out in Seattle sitting next to Jim Hickey in the Rays dugout. He'll be opposed by Marcus Stroman who's unbeaten this year 4-0 in Wednesday. Jake Odorizzi against the knuckleballer R.A. Dickey. And again, our coverage will begin at 6.30 on Wednesday night. Well, isn't it funny, you go over the pitching matchups, how this game, you, know, you can have all the great ideas of how a season's going to turn out, what the experts think, what you think. You know, you would have looked at the American League East and you would have said, Baltimore, eh, the weakest of the teams, they're not going to pitch enough, so you kind of write them off. You look at the other four teams, you're like, well, Toronto, they're all offense, not much with the pitching. And, and then look how it's gone. Baltimore right up there at the top. Toronto not being led by their offense. They're being led by their pitching staff, specifically the starters. Yep. It, it's just an amazing, amazing game that you've got to stick with, watch every day, and over the course of a six-month period of time, it, it, it tells a story, and the cream rises to the top. So many different elements to this game. Not only game to game, but when you put them all together to make up a season, hard to calculate. That's why it's interesting. As long as this game's been around, people try to quantify it, and more ability to do that today than yeah. ever. Yeah. And, and you're still chasing it, just trying to get it right. No doubt. Yeah, and you never will. Yep. You, you know, I mean, you may get closer. You may feel like you're closing in on it, but you, yep. because it's played by humans, ultimately. You, you can't do it. You cannot do it. 3 1. Big cut there by Jennings. 3 and 2. And Jennings singled and scored in the second, doubled in two runs in the fourth, and actually hit a ball about as hard as he's hit one all night in the third inning and lined out to Donaldson at third. Oh There's my. a drive high and deep to left, and Jennings has hit this one out. His second home run of the year. Boy, he hit that one a long way to left. His third hit of the night. He continues to love this ballpark and has another big night tonight. The 
Yellowwood bringing the lumber, and that's what Jennings has done tonight with three hits. Hit the ball hard four times tonight. It's three for five. And belts a home run to lead off the ninth against Jesse Chavez, who had just entered the game. It's 13 to 2 now. Now Kurt Casale. Pitch is low. Rays with 54 team home runs. Trailing only the Orioles now in the American League. They've been slowly but surely working their way up the ladder. They've hit some tonight with some guys on base, something you've been asking for for a long time, partner. <laughs> yeah. Runs in clusters that way. First home run for Jennings since the 16th of April, so it's been a month. He hit one against the White Sox. The Sally's called out on strikes. Pierce hit the first home run tonight. Beckham hit one. Casale won, and now Jennings. Here's Brad Miller. Up the left side toward the corner. That's a foul ball, just foul. He hits foul balls hard. <laughs> that ball the other way, <laughs> yeah. by the way. We talked about all those home runs, the distance he's had on his home runs. Strike, nothing at two. It's a big night for the Rays. 13 runs, 16 hits. Now one ball, two strikes. Rays scored 12 runs. Against the Red Sox at Fenway on the 21st of April. They now have 13 tonight here in Toronto. Two and two. They did have that five home run game in New York. Hey, there's a base hit to left by Miller. He'll make the turn and hold. So the second hit of Chavez. Those hits they had had until tonight was in that same game at Boston on the 21st of April. So 13 runs and 17 hits so far tonight. Ground ball third grabbed by Burns out at second out at first five four three Burns Barney to smoke the Rays settle for a run on the home run by Desmond Jennings we go to the bottom of the ninth inning the Rays lead this game 13 to 2.
the ninth. Andy Romero will take the hill for the Rays. Pitcher of the night making his 14th appearance. 10 strikeouts and 13 in the third innings and looking to wrap this one up here for the Rays at opponent's average. How about that? 091. Does have some walks, but boy, they don't hit him. Michael Saunders leads it off. Left handed hitting outfielder against the southpaw. Pitch up and away. Josh Tully, the catcher, will follow. And then Darwin Barney is due up. Miller positioned perfectly. Saunders is out number one. Josh Tolley. Had an at bat in the seventh inning and picked up a high. Base hit to open the seventh inning as we look at the Rays. This pitch down. Rays season's highs in the runs and hits tonight. 13 runs, 17 hits. A high fly ball. Jennings in left is there. So two up and two down. Yeah, the thing that, that you like about it too, Wayne, is one, two, the Rays have scored in six different innings. You know, they just continued to keep the pressure on, weren't content. And hopefully that rolls over and bodes well for the ball game tomorrow because they're going to face a tough customer in Marcus Stroman. Fastball missing at 97. There's a base hit. Barney keeps it going. It's the eighth hit. Now for Toronto. Barney's second hit. Kevin Pilar will bat against Romero. Sally's going to have a little visit on the hill. Boston rained out at Kansas City tonight. The Yankees playing in Arizona. Arizona with a 1 0 lead. It's only in the bottom of the first. Pilar takes the pitch down. Baltimore and Boston started essentially tied for first, although Baltimore held first place by percentage points. So at the moment, the race started six and a half back, Toronto five and a half back. Two and one to count on Pilar. And it's two two on Pilar. Nice off speed delivery there by Romero. You know, known for his fastball because he can get it up there in the mid to upper 90s. But the ability to Throw some off speed pitches, little change up, slider. Fly ball into right. Hunter makes the catch, and the Rays are winners tonight in a big way. Seasons high in runs, season high in hits, and the Rays win this one 13 to 2 to take the first game of the series as Drew Smiley picks up the victory. 
His second win of the year for the Rays. 13 runs, 17 hits, no errors, with five men left on base. For the Blue Jays, two runs, eight hits, one error, with eight men left on base. Took two hours and 54 minutes to play this one before 26,516.